On today's show, Faraday Future gets a new factory in California, the Bolliger B1 gets 6,000 hand raises in two weeks, and Mercedes-Benz gets schooled on social media. These stories and more coming up next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We're 100% Kiwi and 49% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, a professional musician turned electric vehicle crusader, and I'm here to bring Kiwis our weekly roundup of the biggest news stories around the world in relation to cleaner, greener transport. As always, thanks for joining us. It might have given up on plans to build a $1 billion factory just north of Las Vegas, but Chinese-backed electric car startup Faraday Future announced this week that it's taken up a lease on a manufacturing facility in Hanford, California, where it hopes to build its FF91 electric car. The facility, midway between San Francisco and Los Angeles, is, says Faraday Future, strategically located. But given some of the financial woes the company has suffered of late, it's probably more accurate to say it's the best fit for the company in terms of size, rent and taxes. FF says it will bring the FF91 to market by the end of next year, but I remain to be convinced. Let's hope I'm wrong. As Tesla's biggest energy storage contract to date, the massive 129 megawatt hour grid tied storage system it's supplying to South Australia is certainly a make or break project for Tesla, especially since Tesla CEO Elon Musk promised that it would be free if the entire power pack isn't supplied within 100 days of inking the necessary contracts. But while it will be Tesla branded, we learned this week that the sheer number of lithium ion cells Tesla's getting through right now means that this particular power pack project will be filled with Samsung SDI cells rather than Tesla or Panasonic cells. It not only illustrates just how many lithium ion cells Tesla is using right now, but it shows how demand will just keep ramping up. And in associated news, Tesla's battery partner Panasonic said this week that it predicts those new 2170 cells it's making for the Model 3 at the Gigafactory will reach profitability by next year, which is not bad considering the amount of money it's invested in Tesla's facility and the very short period of time since the factory launched. In short, there's money in them their cells. With electric vehicles well and truly here to stay, we're seeing some new companies coming out of the woodwork, promising to revolutionize their little corner of the market. And this week was no exception. That's because startup Change, spelled with a J rather than a G, exited stealth mode with a video advertising its V8070 panel van, complete with a 70 kilowatt hour battery pack and a cabin that reminds me a little bit of the Volvo XC90. The company claims the van will travel about 70 miles, 113 kilometers per charge when fully laden. That may not seem like much, but it's well within the average daily duty cycle of a delivery truck in a busy city. And with a payload of 6,000 pounds, 2.7 metric tons, it should be able to compete with most routes. Price is yet to be announced, but stay tuned for more info as I have it. Sticking with cargo a little longer, we learned this week that Tesla is in the process of discussions with both the states of California and Nevada concerning real-world tests of its semi-autonomous Tesla truck. According to Reuters, which broke the story midweek, Tesla is close to putting test trucks on the road and has designed a system that allows platooning of trucks, allowing massive truck trains to autonomously cross the country with cargo on board. We'll see the Tesla Semi for the first time next month, says Tesla, so I'm sure we'll learn more about the technology it has in mind at that point. Not to be outdone on the autonomous vehicle front, though, Tesla's former autopilot hardware provider, Mobileye, which was recently acquired by Intel for $15 billion, will be helping Intel put a total of 100 Level 4 autonomous cars on the road, with the first batch of cars due to enter testing by the end of this year. For those who don't know, Level 4 is the next step up from the kind of Level 3 operation we're seeing in Tesla's Model S, Model X and Model 3. It isn't the full hands-off automation we'll see with Level 5, when humans won't even need to be in the car, but it's pretty close. And given I live just down the road from one of Intel's many offices in this area, I'm going to go and see if I can get a ride. Watch this space. 
Two weeks ago in New York, a new electric car startup called Bollinger exited stealth and shared the B1 SUV with the world. Practical, rugged, and perhaps a little basic, the B1 reminds me a little of an all electric Land Rover Defender, complete with all wheel drive capabilities and a choice of 60 kilowatt hour or 100 kilowatt hour battery packs. As a car, some people may find it lacking, but as a work truck, it's just what the doctor ordered and, says Bollinger, has already got 6,000 people expressing an interest in buying one. Admittedly, its online reservation system hasn't opened yet, and hand raisers don't necessarily mean sales. But it's a good show that there's a demand for this kind of vehicle in a world where you'd be forgiven for thinking Tesla is the only choice. The average temperature in the United States has risen dramatically since 1980, and predictions for the effects of human-caused climate change are woefully underestimated. That's the opinion of a new joint climate change study completed earlier this year by scientists from 13 different US federal agencies and leaked online in its draft form out of fear that President Trump would dismiss its findings as nonsense, or worse still, bury its message. One of the most comprehensive reports to date and produced with data from tens of thousands of scientists from around the world, the report warns that even if the planet stopped emitting greenhouse gases today, the effects of what we've done to the planet thus far would cause a half degree Fahrenheit, one third degree Celsius, increase in temperature over the next 100 years. Since that's not possible, the rise is likely to be nearer six or seven times that. The EPA, one of several federal agencies involved in this report, has until the end of next week to approve the report before it can be officially published. But given the current administration's track record, well, I'm going to leave you to draw your own conclusions. And finally, as I covered last week in the show, Mercedes-Benz has now officially ended production of the B-Class electric drive, leaving the brand with no electric cars for now, unless we count the various smart EDs, which are technically a separate brand. Anyway, as I explained last week, the production end was no surprise, especially given Benz's plans to bring a new slew of electric models to market under its brand new EQ brand. Well, this week, someone at Mercedes decided to take to Twitter to ask fans if they'd like an electric Benz or not, something which instantly resulted in hundreds upon hundreds of replies, many of them from EV fans or owners stating that they were already plugging in. Thank you very much. Of course, the most amusing ones? Tesla owners keen to show Benz that they'd lost out on some custom for not offering a high-performance EV sooner. Oh, Mercedes, how could you? And on that note, I think it's time to end today's show. But before I go, I just want to remind you all again about EV World NZ, an electric car industry conference and public show taking place at the Vodafone Events Centre in Auckland on September 8th and 9th. With the industry conference set for Friday the 8th and the public expo set for Saturday the 9th, right at the start of International Drive Electric Week, you won't want to miss it. Best of all, the public expo on Saturday is free, so make sure you follow the link below to find out more. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, tell your friends about this show, and if you've got some feedback, be sure to send it our way. As always, I'll be back soon with more Ecotech goodness, so make sure you hit that notification bell to find out the minute a new show is uploaded. In the meantime, enjoy your weekend, make sure you do something fun, and don't forget to help keep those wind turbines spinning by switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. That's it. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.